In this course, you learned that you can create variables with let and const, and the difference is that variables created with let are changeable, variables created with const are constants, and therefore not really variable regarding the value they hold, at least not after they have been created. Now, it turns out there actually is also a third way of creating variables, which I haven't taught you thus far, and you'll see why I haven't taught it in these lectures here. You can create a variable with the var keyword as well. So besides let and const, that is also available. Var creates a variable just like let does. And the only difference we can clearly see right now is that const creates a constant. So var indeed, just like let, creates a variable which you can really change. Which of course raises the question, why do we have var and let? If they do the same, why do we need these two different keywords? Well, turns out they don't exactly do the same. Now let's first have a look at availability. And there, var has been available since ever. This is the way to create variables since JavaScript exists, essentially. Let, on the other hand, is only available since that ES6 version, so since browsers started to adopt that. And it's the same for const. So that's a difference, but this only explains since when we can use these features, not why we need let. Now that, on the other hand, can be answered with this last comparison here. var allows us to create variables in the function and global scope. And that's something you learn about in this course already, right? And you learn it for let, not for var. Well, turns out, actually let does not really use function and global scope, although in many cases it behaves exactly like that, but it uses a concept called block scope. And the same is true for const. So let's now dive into block scope and find out how that differs from function and global scope and what that means for you and for the way you write your scripts. You can spin up a simple project for that. Attached, you also find a dummy one. This is simply an index.html file with nothing in it but a script import in the end. Script import to this empty app.js file. And in there, let's write some code. Now, I did mention that any variable you create with const or let outside of a function is global, and any variable you create with const or let inside of a function is local, so it belongs to that function and can't be accessed from outside. Is that false? No. The good news is that is totally true, so what you learned is true. There's just a bit more to const and let than what we covered thus far. And for a good reason, because that can only be fully explained now that we also know if statements and loops. So let's start simple. Let's add a variable name here, maybe. Good old name max or your name, of course. And let's add a function. Uh, and we can say greet here. And in this function, if I console log name, then you learned that, of course, if I call greet here, we actually will see max being printed out in the console. Let's quickly validate that by going to the page, opening the developer tools. And there, let's go to the console. And if I reload the page, we see max here. Now that's not too surprising. That is something we learned before. Now what you also learned is that you can go into a function and create a variable in here, let's say age. And if I now also output that, this will also work. But what will not work is if I try to output it from outside of that function. So if I try to output name and age down there, name will work because that is a global variable here, but age will actually not work. So if we save that and we then reload, you'll see I get an error, uncaught reference error, age is not defined in line eight, and that's exactly this line and exactly this variable. Now on the other hand, if I delete this here and I don't try to output age here and we reload, this works. This is from line five, which is inside of our function, this log here, and from line eight, we only print the name. So that is working and that is what we already learned. You also learned that you can shadow variables so that we could redeclare a variable in here inside of a function which we already declared outside of it. If you would try to declare an existing function here, then we'll actually get an error. So if I try to do that and redeclare name after declaring it here, if I now reload, you'll see I get an error because the identifier name has already been declared. But if I delete this line here and we now reload, the script works just fine and we print manual inside of the function. So redeclaring the variable name here does not hurt because this is locally inside of a function and therefore JavaScript actually shadows this outside variable, which means it kind of overwrites it, but only inside of this function. It simply ignores this outer global uh, variable, you could say.
So that is what you already know. Now what is new? Actually, as I mentioned, variables and constants created with let and const are block scope. Var variables, and var is that keyword which we haven't used before, are function and global scope. So therefore, in everything we learned thus far, you could absolutely replace let with var, like I did it here, I replaced let in all three places with var, and you would get the exact same behavior. If I reload, I get the exact same output. Now, one first difference we can see here, by the way, is if I try to redeclare this, so here, where I declare this again after already having declared it, this will actually not throw an error. So here we already see a first minor difference, though that's not the main difference I want to dive into right now. But this already is a little thing where they differ. And arguably let is better here because we want to get an error in such a case. Because if we redeclare a variable which we already declared in the same scope, that typically is not what we want. We maybe want to assign a new value, sure, but we don't want to recreate the variable. That's not something you would ever want to do. So that's a first difference, but not the main difference. The main difference is really related to the scope. So here we have this function, all great. And let me try to output h down there. So a variable which only was created inside of the function. And if I now reload, you'll see we still get that same error. So phrased a bit differently with not being defined. Not, so the declaration is not the problem, but the definition. But generally, this still doesn't work. So no difference there. Now we can see a difference if I change something. Let's say we want to add a if check here and check if name is equal to max, which it here of course is. So we will make it into that if statement here as long as name is max. And then in here I create a new variable and this variable simply is a hobbies array where I have sports and cooking for example. And I can then console log my hobbies here. And now let me also try to log my hobbies down there. Now this is not a function, this is an if statement, right? That's really important. This is an if statement, not a function. And I'm using var. So now if I save that and I reload, you see we get no error. Instead here we print the array, that's from line number 5, which is this line here in the if statement. And we also print the array here, and that's coming from line number 14. And that's outside of the if statement down here. So maybe you expected that this would not work because the variable is created in an if statement. But what does this mean? Well, since it is not in a function, and the if statement also is not in a function, this simply means that this is created as a global variable. So it means that this really is now a normal global variable as if we would have to find it out there. So therefore, anywhere in the code where we can access global variables, which basically is everywhere, we can use hobbies. That of course includes our function here, just in case you're wondering. If I try to access hobbies there and I reload, that will also work. We're outputting it down here. So that's interesting. Now let me change this var here to let. So only there, all other variables are still created with var, though you could change them to let as well. But the hobbies variable is the important one right now. So I changed this to let, and of course you could also change it to const because we never assign a new value. That's not what this is about here. So you can use let or const here. Don't use var, that's the important thing. And with that changed and saved, try reloading. Now you get an error. We get that log from line number five. So this log here works just fine as we would probably expect because we declare and create the variable in the line before that. But thereafter we get an error stemming from line number 14, which in the end is this line where we try to access hobbies. And that's the difference. var only knows global scope and function scope. So a variable created in a function can't be used outside of it. A variable created globally can be used everywhere. Now for let and const, this also is the case, variables and functions can be used in functions, variables outside of functions can be used everywhere, but actually let and const don't care about functions, they care about the curly braces and functions happen to have curly braces here, so do if statements. And of course I'm not talking about the curly braces you have when you create some object, right? So if you create a person here and you have the curly braces here to create an object, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the curly braces you have for if statements, for loops, 
for functions. So not for this object value which you're creating here. You can't create a variable in here to begin with because that would be invalid syntax. Here you need key value pairs. So just to make that clear. But any other curly braces you have in your code, so if statements, loops, functions, try catch blocks, if you create variables between the curly braces with let or const, then the variables are scoped to that block. So the curly braces mark a block in the end. And therefore they are only available in that block. They don't spill outside of that block. And that is a key difference. And that is great because that gives you more control over where your data is available. You want to use it everywhere? You want to use hobbies everywhere? Well, simply declare it here and only assign a new value in here. This will work because from every block you can access all variables or constants defined on a higher level. So in a block around that block, be that a function or be that your main script. But you can't, just as for the function global scope you learned earlier, you can't access variables defined in some child block, so to say. So a block on a different, on a lower level from outside that block. That does not work. So you have more control with that block scope thing. And it can also avoid some nasty issues or unintended behaviors, which you had with var in the past. That's why with modern JavaScript, as we're learning and using it in this course, you only use let and const. It forces you to write cleaner code because you get an error if you want to use your hobbies down there and you only declare them here because that simply is incorrect code and that's good. It forces you to find a solution like the one I just showed you where you define it here and assign a new value here. So it forces you to write better, cleaner code which is clearer about your intentions. It's actually a bit unexpected that you would want to use hobbies down there if you define the variable inside of an if function. Because if you define it, and with that I mean you use the let keyword or the const keyword, if you define it in a if function or in a loop, the first thing I would think as a developer is that you probably only want to use it there. Otherwise you would have created it as a global variable, right? So it forces you to be clearer about your intentions and that's always a good thing because it leads to cleaner code. So that's the thing behind let and const. And as a consequence, we really don't use var anymore. Only work with let and const in modern JavaScript. Don't use var. There really is no use case where you would need var anymore. So why is var still in the language then? Well, because of that browser support thing. You can't remove it because that would mean if Chrome decides to not support the var keyword anymore, that all scripts that still use var, and that will be many, many, many scripts around the world on different web pages, stop working. And that might not be what you want if you're working on the Chrome team. So that's why we still have var, but we don't use it anymore. And the difference is the block scope. Now, a little side note, the block is really just created by the curly braces. So you could theoretically also put curly braces here. This does not create a JavaScript object because it's not on the right side of an equal sign. So it's not used as a value here. Instead, a variable created in here would really only be available in here. Now, this is not a syntax you use too often because you rarely have the case that you want to suddenly create a variable randomly in some code just in a block. Instead, it's really just in if statements, loops, functions, and so on, where you would need variables that belong to that if statement, loop, and function. But technically, this here also creates a block. And therefore, if I now save this and I reload, you'll see I get an error stemming from line number eight, which is this line where I can't access test. So it's really the curly braces when they're not being used to create an object, but in all other cases that create a block and then let and const belong to that block and can only be used in there or in blocks nested inside of that block. So if we had a loop or an if statement inside of this if statement, then we could use hobbies in there. If we had an if statement or a loop inside of the greet function, we could use age and name in there. So that's exactly what you learned before with function and global scope. It just isn't only about function or global scope. Instead, that block scope thing is a thing.